Hello and welcome back to our continuing coverage from CES 2023. I'm with Marek from TCL. Marek, uh, great to see you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you. Nice now, to see you here. No European products here at CES, but lots of technology that we can talk about coming from TCL. Um, and maybe we'll have a walk around the stand. A bit unusual video for us, but we'll have a walk around the stand. You can point out some of the products and sure, talk about Sure, I think technology. we can even start from some products uh, we have. Uh, because, uh, of course, uh, last year we had uh, uh, international range, uh, which was uh, the range uh, we also introduced in Europe. This year uh, we announced only uh, US range, but we have also some highlights uh, we can give to uh, AV Forum's uh, viewers and uh, how uh, 2023 TCL product range will evolve. Okay, so we're standing here, mini LED, it's still a big story for TCL. Yes, so this year was uh, the first to introduce mini LED to the market. Uh, we did it in uh, 2019 and then we had uh, a lot of uh, demonstrations uh, before. Uh, we really bet on mini LED. Uh, today uh, we have uh, several uh, product uh, ranges uh, and uh, then uh, we also cover sizes from 55 inch up to 98 inch and uh, you know perfectly that uh, market uh, in Europe is rapidly growing in sizes like 75, 85, 98 and uh, here we will have a lot of uh, new mini LED products. And, you know, big screen sizes are a thing now, aren't they? I mean, people are buying bigger, the prices are coming down. So how many customers in Europe are actually going for 75 up to 98 inches? Uh, if we look from European market perspective, uh, so uh, the market uh, was uh, last year around uh, 35 million pieces. Uh, and uh, then if we look on a 75 inch uh, segment and above, it is uh, around uh, 5% and it is uh, growing. Uh, so then if we take, uh, we talk about uh, 1.8 million, if I calculate eight, of uh, this kind of products to be sold and uh, as I said it is rapidly growing one yeah. of the fastest growing segments because 55 is not growing anymore uh, 65 is still growing but uh, here is the major growth okay so we're gonna have a, a little walk around the stand um, so stand here with mini LED TVs Marek um, like you say big screen size and so on so what are we talking about in terms of dimming zones and, and so on uh, if we look on uh, mini LED products uh, this year, so then uh, in uh, TCL we have uh, in 2022 range we had C83 and uh, C95. Uh, so uh, what we will do this year, we will uh, at least double number of dimming zones. Uh, we will also increase peak brightness uh, in the mini LED products and we will introduce uh, more and more uh, large screen sizes like 85, like 98 uh, inch. The idea is to have at least uh, two product ranges uh, covering large screen sizes as uh, in the past we had only one 98 inch and uh, for example one uh, 85 inch but more focus on the price. Uh, it was global dimming so this year uh, mini LED uh, products are coming to the market. Excellent. So we're going to have a walk around because there's lots of things to see um, on the stand this year. We have a lot of uh, demonstrations, but I think before we will move, we can also look on uh, products which just US team announced, but uh, similar products will come to Europe. Uh, one of the uh, new product uh, we also want to focus uh, here is uh, Full Array Local Dimming Range. Uh, so uh, 144 hertz, even 240, uh, 240 uh, full HD input for gaming uh, with uh, more than 100 dimming zones and uh, also very high peak brightness uh, will be available in US and then uh, this uh, product we should also expect in Europe. Yeah, excellent. So ultra slim 8K mini LED. This is an interesting product. So we uh, here enter to our innovation area. In our innovation area, uh, we have OD0 store. So OD0 we introduced uh, at, uh, uh, I think 221 was OD0 year. 
uh, for introduction. So all these zero means there is no space between mini LED backlight and the LCD screen. It was five millimeters thick product. So here we show that we can go even down to two millimeters, very uh, thin product. So uh, at IFA we had it hung uh, to the ceiling. Right now the product is already staying. The key uh, point is uh, to be able to make it so robust that it cannot be bended. So uh, the previous OD0 was based on engraved aluminium. So the same way as Airbus does the wing. So we engraved aluminium. So right now we uh, work on the solution uh, to have the product and to show it that it is possible to have very slim product with a very high picture performance. Right, so uh, the other big story here, Marek, is inkjet um, OLED printed. So maybe explain that to people who don't understand what inkjet is and what that means in terms of you know, panel production. So uh, this one is uh, the first public demonstration for us because until now we did it at SID or other closed uh, industry uh, demonstrations. So first time at CS we have it. Uh, inkjet printing means that we use the same way as inkjet is printing uh, the paper. You have many of you have inkjet printers, but here we use uh, uh, the uh, colors, uh, so uh, in fact, uh, which uh, specific materials with uh, thanks to uh, energy are emitting the light. Uh, we print this uh, as uh, color emitters uh, and uh, then we can achieve very high PPI, uh, pixels per inch uh, density. Uh, so here we show, uh, for example, uh, 31 inch 4K. Why we show it? We show it to show that uh, 65 inch 8K is possible. And if you look on another OLED technology, white OLED, so you see that only 42 inch uh, is possible. So then we can make much more denser, smaller pixels and uh, then have, it have this technology and you see the performance uh, this demos uh, uh, provide uh, and then have it available also in a very high resolution for uh, smaller screens. So then we can also scale up and then go for larger sizes. Technically, uh, this is fab we are uh, building in Shenzhen. It is inkjet uh, based on the JOLED technology and then RGB printed, so we print everything RGB uh, and then uh, there is no any other light which is going through and uh, yeah. so on, no blue light and so on. Uh, and uh, here you see uh, what we are able to achieve, what is the performance, uh, the white uh, gamut uh, and uh, then also peak uh, brightness. So if you ask when we expect these products to have on the market, so from the, we look uh, next year, for the next year as possible pilot production, but okay. today well, it's very difficult for me to, to give you uh, when exactly we will introduce this technology to uh, TCL products uh, in Europe, if it will be next year or maybe in two years. And of course, if anybody's got any questions out there about this technology, uh, Marek, you're due back on the podcast very soon. Um, we're going to talk about new ranges and so on. If anybody's got any questions, about inkjet and OLED and you want to know a little bit more, um, I'm sure you'll be happy to answer those of questions. Course. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So if you want to do that, then podcast at avforums.com. I'll put your question you underneath that. this video in the correct forum. Right, we're going to move over. The other side is very busy here, so we're not going to even attempt to walk on camera. Uh, we'll see you in a second. So you join us on the other side of the TCL stand. And again, we're in the innovation uh, area. And we've got two big TVs to look at here. And one of the main things, Marek, is uh, Power consumption, it's a big thing in the EU, and the UK are still following uh, those rules in terms of power consumption, mainly for 8K TVs. So what is it that TCL are, are doing in terms of power consumption with your TVs for the years ahead? In terms of power consumption, you notice that uh, there is a uh, new regulation. I think it's not new because it was already present by end of 2019, and it was clear that in 2023 energy efficiency index for uh, 4K products will go down from 1.1 to 0.9. Uh, the same happened for Full HD products, uh, it goes to 0.75. And for 4K products, it is uh, manageable and uh, easily achievable for all performance products and also for entry products, we can achieve E-Class, uh, for example, of power consumption. But for 8K, uh, there is a big challenge because uh, the pixel is uh, very small and uh, it's linked with the translucency of uh, the LCD screen. In UHD, we have translucency on the level of 7%. In uh, 
Uh, 8K we have 3.5%, so it means that we have to produce two times more light behind the screen. So if you want to have 1000 nits, we have to produce 30,000 nits uh, uh, behind the screen to mm. achieve this peak brightness. Yeah. And then uh, here the solution we uh, try to work out is uh, the, to improve this translucency to go to 5.5, uh, even 6%. So by this, uh, decrease uh, power consumption. And uh, we have this kind of uh, demonstration uh, here uh, with uh, 1G, 1D, LCD, amorphous silicon uh, solution. Uh, so this is just uh, how we see that uh, market will evolve. So we don't give up on 8K. And then once we see that we can reach uh, the 0 0.9 energy efficiency index for 85, 98 inch, I believe uh, we will be back because on, especially in 98, you see it very close. And uh, then uh, you need uh, much uh, higher uh, resolution. Yeah. So we're looking at a 90 inch 240 Hz uh, TV here. Maybe tell us a little bit more about this. Uh, this one is another uh, showcase, technology showcase, to show that uh, it's uh, possible for LCD technology to achieve 240 uh, frames per second a refresh rate. Why we need it? Uh, so uh, on the one side for gaming to have much smoother motion, so more motion phases. But another point is that if you come closer to the screen, uh, you need also more motion phases because your eye perceives motion as uh, angular movements. Uh, so then if you add to it 1000 nits or even 2000 nits of peak brightness, so there is no way you need oh, 100 or even 200 uh, hertz uh, to see it as you see in the natural world. Marek, a question AV Forums members always ask. Uh, every time we come to a, an event like this, CES or IFA and so on, why are manufacturers not doing 3D anymore? Why can people not buy 3D TV? What's the reason for that at the minute? Is it just because there's no interest? Or? I think uh, the key issue, you know, uh, you, it was uh, related to glasses and uh, then it was generally painful experience. I remember in uh, 2012, I tried to watch uh, the football. It was 2012 uh, Euro yeah. uh, World Cup, uh, no, Euro Cup, yeah, Euro Cup. Yeah. And then I tried to watch it in uh, glasses in 3D. Uh, I managed 10 minutes and then it was absolutely yeah. uh, difficult. Uh, it was active uh, 3D uh, solution. So that's why, you know, it was uh, something what was difficult. On passive side, uh, the, another issue was the resolution, which yeah. was uh, very low. And at this time it was full HD. Uh, then uh, for UHD, uh, when UHD came, uh, in fact, it act as a replacement of 3D because of, because of that of the uh, picture you can see with 4K. And then 8K uh, is uh, bringing another step with native 8K content. But of course, for digital synage, uh, uh, in many cases, you need to catch the attention. Yeah. And for digital synage, uh, we uh, keep developing uh, this kind of glass-free uh, 3D, uh, which are using optical field, optical field display. Uh, so similar uh, solution, I think, is implemented also in our glasses. Uh, this uh, uh, AR or mixed reality glasses mm. uh, we just uh, announced yesterday during uh, CS. So it's only the matter of the size of the screen. It was my first introduction to TCL as a brand many years ago, probably around about 2010, 2011, was the glasses free 3D TV. Um, and I said this morning that, oh, I wonder whatever happened to that technology. So it's great to see it's still around. Yeah, but I think it's a totally different story because this glass free 10 years ago was based on, I think, Fresnel uh, lens. So yeah. there was LCD screen and uh, there was also a specific uh, way of uh, the modulation. But uh, so uh, again, it was excellent solution for digital image. But here you see you don't have this feeling. You see 3D. Uh, but you don't have this kind of distortions coming from lenses and uh, so on. So it's, uh, you know, 10 years, it's uh, like a uh, new age, new era in this kind of uh, products because we are developing and developing. So, I mean, we talked about inkjet OLED as a future product. Micro LED, what's happened with micro LED? Is it still a product that you're developing? Uh, micro, you know, micro LED is, uh, I would say, uh, holy grail for uh, yeah. this kind of uh, screens, but the key challenge for micro LED is uh, how to deliver the energy. So then you have to tell uh, two challenges because you have to pick and place uh, uh, very tiny LEDs and uh, then you need uh, Backplate, so then you need to put them on something which is able to deliver enough of energy. 
So all the products you have right now on the market are based of modules, are so uh, assembled of modules, and you need a very high precision to make it. Uh, so then once oxide uh, technology will be able to deliver a significant amount of energy to drive uh, micro LED so I think we will have these products on the market but you know market is driven by price points average uh, price uh, in Europe right now is uh, 500 something euro yeah. uh, and uh, then so then if you come with product which uh, costs 20 or 50 thousand euro yeah. so you will sell a few pieces so yeah, yeah, then yeah. it's still it is still engineering marvel but it's not a mass production product. Yeah, as you say, it is the holy grail. It just depends how long it's going to take us to, to get to that point. And um, uh, it's at least five, seven years away, isn't it? It's still a, a well, long way. Well, but you know, if you look on uh, the past attempts to this uh, micro LED screens and so on, so there were a lot of announcements tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then engineering versus sales and marketing, there are two different worlds. So then uh, when we engineers say uh, we work very hard and we try to make it, so marketing understands that it will happen tomorrow. Yeah. So that's what's coming up in the future. Um, we do have models coming to Europe. We just don't know exactly what the models will be just at this moment in time. But like I say, Manik's going to come on the podcast uh, once we know what the product's going to be for 23, what technologies are coming to Europe and so on. And again, if you've got any questions, um, or even just give us feedback on this style of video. It's something that we're brand new. We're just trying this. Uh, it's the first time we've ever done it. Marek, thank you very much for your time. It is a pleasure. Um, happy thank New you Year. for your visit here. Also, Happy New Year to you and Happy New Year to all the viewers of AD Forum. And we'll catch you later in another CES video. Thanks for watching.